to God. Turn that on. Tiffany, great job. Thank you, thank you. Bless my heart. Praise God. Praise God. I know that you're so thankful for her. We're so proud of her, and I know how her mom and dad must feel when she gets up. And uh, all of those years, she was so quiet and so timid. And I sat there and listened to her. I was just amazed listening to her tonight because uh, she'd hardly say anything. You know, they'd have to put her up in the front of the choir and surround her with people to get her to even sing. And now she's being used by God in such a great, great way. But I do think that first instrument she played, she needs some miracle grow for it. Because <laughs> it's definitely too small, isn't it? We thank God for his blessings and allowing us to come. It's just been great to be here this week. It's hard to believe that tomorrow night will be the last night of the meeting. And I, I'm still trusting God to speak to the hearts of your unsaved loved ones that you've invited out, that they'll come and that they'll not, they'll do more than hear me preach. They'll hear the voice of the Lord, that they'll turn to the Lord. That's what they need more than anything. They need the Lord. And uh, glad for several that have come down from the church with me tonight. It's always good to have them along. And uh, Brian traveling with us tonight and Fred and Wanda and uh, of course, uh, one of my deacons, Ron, drove us down tonight, and great to have my wife here tonight. She's feeling much better after last night. It's amazing what uh, going to a doctor can do, you know, help you out a little bit. The Lord used the medicine, and we're so thankful that she's feeling better and that she's here as well. And I want you to turn tonight to Luke chapter 23 and verse 33. I'm preaching on one of my favorite subjects from the Word of God I've probably preached on this subject more than any other. I have preached on this subject many times from this pulpit, but I want to make this clear. I make no apologies for preaching about Calvary and the cross. I think the cross of Jesus Christ needs to be lifted up in the world that we live in today. For Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We can lift ourselves up and nobody will ever be changed. No heart will ever be touched. No life will ever be changed forever. But if we lift Christ up, it'll make the difference in all eternity for men and women and boys and girls that need the Lord. One verse of scripture, Luke 23, 33, I call your attention to this verse. And when they were come to the place, which is called what? Calvary. Calvary. There they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And when they were come to the place that's called Calvary, there they crucified him. You know, that one statement, there they crucified him. There's a perfect outline from that verse, just from those few words. There, the place called Calvary. They, the people at Calvary, crucified the punishment that took place at Calvary. Him, the prince of Calvary, Jesus Christ. Without Calvary, where would we be? We'd have nothing left to preach. There would be nothing that we could ever share had it not been for Calvary. Someone said one time, all the streams of ancient history end at Calvary. And all of the rivers of modern civilization history begin at Calvary. Calvary divided our date line in the fact that the world was never the same after Jesus died and rose from the grave. Calvary is what makes the difference. Many years ago, I took my first trip to the Holy Land. I mentioned Ron being with us. Ron has been with me on trips to the Holy Land. And the first time you ever go to that place that's called Gordon's Calvary, and you see the place of the skull, it's like your life changes forever. But you know, had I never been there and seen it with these eyes, it was still just as real to me because by faith we journey back 2,000 years every time that a sinner comes and cries out to the Lord. 2,000 years we go back to the day that Jesus died and had he not died and shed his blood, we would all be without hope and there would be no way that we could claim salvation. Calvary. I think of the words of the songwriter when he said, years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died at Calvary. Calvary was the place where Jesus was willing to come and give his life. 
He didn't have to die. He chose to die. One great preacher in yesteryear, when he took the phrase at Calvary, he penned these words, at Calvary, the purpose of divine love is visible. At Calvary, the mysteries of prophecy unravel. At Calvary, the problem of human redemption is solved. At Calvary, the righteous judgment of God is met. At Calvary, condemnation can be lifted from sinners. At Calvary, the serpent's head was bruised. At Calvary, the sentence of death was revoked. At Calvary, the fountain of salvation flows freely. At Calvary, the bitter waters of life are made sweet. At Calvary, the door of heaven was opened. At Calvary, the shadows of death was dispelled. At Calvary, the darkness of eternal damnation was now removed. At Calvary was the place where all the eyes of the Old Testament looked forward to Calvary. And now all of the saints from that day forward look back at Calvary. Have you been to Calvary? That's the question. Have you been to the cross? At Calvary, that's where my sin debt was paid. At Calvary, that's where the Lord saved my soul. At Calvary, that's where Jesus said, it is finished. I remember years ago reading the story of Governor Briggs, the governor of Massachusetts. He had some friends that had made a long trip to Calvary and to the Holy Land. Land. And while they were at Calvary back years ago, you could climb a ladder and go up. No longer can you do that, but you could go up and see the exact spot in the keel that Jesus was crucified on. And while they were there, they picked up an item and brought back and they brought it back to him and his friend said, Governor, I was at Calvary and I couldn't help but think of you. So I wanted to bring something back just to let you know when I was at Calvary, I was thinking of you. He said, that's wonderful, but I'm so glad at Calvary the Savior of the world was thinking of me. Had it not been for Jesus at Calvary willing to die, we would be lost and never have an opportunity to see a wonderful place called heaven now it still takes Calvary at Calvary we see the demonstration of God's love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life he said greater love hath no man than this that a man would lay down his life for his friends. We can see God's love manifest in many ways in our life, but it's none greater than at Calvary. There we see the pinnacle of God's love. Jesus not only willing to die for us, but willing to die for all the ungodly. Everyone that has ever rejected him or denied him or had no interest in him still, he was willing to look at those even that crucified him and say, Father, for Forgive them for they know not what they do. The love of God is seen the greatest at Calvary. Every one of us would have to say when we think of God's love at Calvary, it's greater than what our mind can comprehend. We can't, we can't, we can't get our thoughts together enough to try to, 